Well, Wajiha, thank you so much for, for welcoming us here in, in Islamabad at your office. It's wonderful to be here. For the audience, could you please briefly introduce yourself? Thank you very much for coming to our office. So I'm Wajiha. I'm the co-founder and CTO of OrbitEd. So what is OrbitEd in, in just a few words? What, what is the mission and the purpose behind the company? So we are basically a fun, interactive, and more importantly, a measurable learning platform. Mm -hmm. We are focusing on two audiences, K-12, in which we are targeting students and enterprises. And our mission is to create a world which is more empathetic. We are aiming at creating future of work where people have better abilities to communicate they have higher EQs mm -hmm. and they are more empathetic towards each other. That's, that's fantastic. So we've talked about all the, the, the challenges. Now, what is Orbit Ed solution? Concretely, what is your product? So we've created this interactive learning platform through which employees can practice the nuanced soft skills mm -hmm. through conversational role play with our emotionally intelligent avatars. Um, if they get exposed to challenging situations that they usually face at their workplace, but within the safety of a virtual environment, mm -hmm. they feel more confident on how to act when they are in a real life scenario. Mm -hmm. So that's what we've created. So do you have an example of, of, of some real life scenarios um, uh, to help students you know, um, evolve and learn in a safe environment and also for employees uh, that want to um, learn, learn more and be trained in their corporate environment? So uh, uh, I'll, I'll go with the corporate environment of one course. first. So uh, we created the sales training yes. in which uh, that, that was one of the internal experiments actually. We had hired a new sales representative. Mm -hmm. We thought our sales would go up but they actually went down and we conducted this experiment last year. Uh, then since we've been working in AR, VR since the past four or five years, we yes. quickly put together this training in which there were some common scenarios that occur. Uh, they have to do, uh, there's basically a script that they have to read or to go through when they're talking to customers. Mm. So that person was trained in that we are, uh, through that VR module, and we saw our sales going up after that. And within a month or so, our sales were 2x. So there was, uh, an immediate impact of that training. So, so how does it work? Like you basically put on the put on the the, the, the lenses, and what happens? Is is there any interaction, or is it just basically you talking to someone, not getting any response, but having you know the a real life scenario that you can play with? What is the level of interaction um, within the experience? Uh, so uh, it's just like that, you put on the headset, yes. uh, so if it's designed for our office, you are going to see this yes. uh, you're going to see this virtually, and then it, it's, uh, it depends on the uh, module that you're taking. So okay. for example, the sales one, you have the customer walking in from the door, and there are different interactions designed, like we have three, line, um, three uh, course of actions that you can take or that person can take. Okay. And then, for example, you greeted that person and then asked that person to come sit in front of you so that person yeah. will come. If you don't do that, there's a, a certain thing that uh, the customer will do. Okay. So uh, it's interactive. Okay. You are going to perform some action and based on your action, the okay. avatar in front of you will do certain things. Okay. So in that way, your employee is trained that this is the right thing to do. And if you do a certain thing, that's, yeah. you know, you're not going to convert the customer mm. uh, th that, you know, that's the goal, uh, conversion of a customer. Makes, so, sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Thank you very much for sharing. Um, what about um, a real life scenario in, in a school, for example, where uh, your product could be used? Um, what are the different ways that, that schools could actually collaborate with uh, Orbit Ed? Yeah, so um, there, uh, we started off as an augmented reality product, but yes. then we quickly saw that not all the schools have the AR devices available. Of course. So we converted our platform for, to a cloud-based mm -hmm. platform as well. And um, I'll, I'll give you an example of a concept. So basically, uh, there are gamified concepts uh, through which they can learn difficult science topics easily. Uh, so for example, mid middle school students, they can learn about electromagnetism while creating a magnetic levitation train in our platform. So they're very excited when they see the train running, and that's when they have applied the 
correct electromagnetic uh, principles. Mm. So yeah, this is one of the scenarios okay. uh, in which. Okay. Uh, and have you have you run tests with schools already? Like, with how many schools have you been collaborating so far? So uh, we've been operating and uh, we were operating before COVID in schools. Uh, we were going B2B. Mm -hmm. uh, we were, uh, that was mainly our uh, sales channel. Uh, we were operating in Boston, USA and in Pakistan yeah. with some schools. But COVID uh, disrupted the education system completely. Of course. And post COVID we've been going B2C. Right mm. now we are selling directly to parents. Okay. So yeah. not, not to schools, but it's basically education that that's yeah, what yeah. i wanted to understand it's not necessarily collaborating with schools but col collaborating directly with, exactly, with, with yeah. parents yeah, to, yeah. to basically cut the intermediary that that yeah. school can can be right and i guess um, after covid things changed a lot parents understood that e-learning can be impactful they started looking out for solutions mm -hmm. and that's where we found this opportunity and b2c has been going much better for us compared to b2b but if you're collaborating with, 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 with parents, um, obviously, I think that you know, your product is a tool, it's a great tool, but from my perspective, it has to be associated with some kind of curriculum, with, with some kind of um, you know, learning program. So how do you make sure that these two things are connected if you don't necessarily collaborate directly with a school or uh, a learning institution? So uh, we are offering it as an after-school program. We okay. have our own curriculum designed, okay. uh, which okay. is customizable based on every child. So we have defined different age groups, and for each age group, there is a di uh, different curriculum, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, what do you think about the potential of uh, a virtual rea reality? and artificial intelligence in, in the, the coming years, not only in the education space or upskilling space, but in all industries. I believe the data that technology is able to provide that makes us, that makes it easy to run, you know, operations and even if I stay specific to training, uh, classroom trainers are doing really good right now, but yes. there's one major point that they're lacking in that's measuring the impact of that training. Mm -hmm. And if you are doing that training, conducting that training through virtual reality, there are dozens of data points that you can get, you know, take out of uh, that one particular module. And you know, aside from training, there are specific uh, scenarios in healthcare, defense, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you have applications in um, oil and gas, yeah, uh, yeah. So. Opportunities are limitless, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are the the you mentioned data points? What are some examples of data points that can actually help measure the the impact? So, for example, uh, you are taking an um, training on onboarding, and uh, you know you've designed certain paths for your employees, and they are taking those paths. Now you can you can get the where they are looking so mm. there are data points related to their gaze yeah so uh, it actually gives you feedback on if your points if your uh, you know paths are intuitive enough for mm -hmm. humans to understand do you as an organization need to change your layout mm -hmm. of office to make mm -hmm. it more um, uh, intuitive and more uh, user friendly for your employees mm -hmm. and in case of a negotiation training we can gauge different elements of their speech to see if this person is now confident enough to be put in a real life scenario mm -hmm. so and then there are of course decision point within that 3d environment so mm -hmm. um, you're getting uh, data on their decisions on their gaze on their speech on their body language and when you combine all these they're so much powerful that they give you feedback as an organization that how do you need to improve mm -hmm. they give uh, um, they would give you individual learning path for each employee their potential and how to take full advantage or full use uh, utilize that uh, resource to the full capacity that makes a lot so, of sense yeah. that makes a lot of sense thank you so right now let's talk about the impact what is uh, orbit at impact qualitatively and in numbers so we believe that our tool will be a stepping stone in the personal and professional growth of hundreds of thousands of workers mm -hmm. creating economic mobility mm -hmm. we are creating a future of work where we all are better humans with better abilities to communicate with higher eq and empathy mm -hmm. 
uh, and in terms of the quantitative impact, we've measured that our tool creates 27 to 75% mm -hmm. more confident workforce. The retention rate of the employees has been 60% more for the organization who have been taking the VR-based trainings. Mm -hmm. the, employer, the employees are 55% more engaged mm -hmm. and happy in their work environment. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for, for, for sharing that. That's wonderful. Um, now, what is Orbit Ed impact? Qualitatively and in numbers as well. Well, we believe our training tool is going to be a stepping stone in the personal and professional growth of mm -hmm. hundreds of thousands of workers creating economic mobility. Mm -hmm. We are helping create a future of work where we all are better humans with better abilities to communicate, higher EQ and higher empathy. Mm -hmm. uh, so far, we have impacted the lives of more than 7,500 students mm -hmm. and uh, in terms of enterprises, we've helped f uh, five enterprises and over 3,000 employees. Mm -hmm. So it's still the early stage, as you yeah. as you mentioned to me yeah. earlier. But okay, that's that, that's great, fantastic. Now, how do you measure that impact? Uh, there are different mechanisms designed for that. There are pre and post service. Then, mm -hmm. of course, we have data points built within the application as well. So a combination of yeah. that gives us that data. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. So. Basically, could you, could you please sum up for me a few major outcomes that your product unlocks, um, both for companies and also in the, in the education space? So people that are using your product, basically, what does, it, what does it bring us? What is the outcome for them? Yeah, so we are targeting the soft skills uh, initially. Mm -hmm. So three outcomes that we are uh, targeting right now is sales, uh, one is a sales module, so with that an increase in revenue, Yeah. Uh, then there's uh, increase in productivity, Yes. and then better customer service, so customer communication is one of the modules okay. that we are offering. Yes. That's in a corporate, uh, that's in a corporate yes. environment. Yes. yes, and with students with K-12, we are specifically targeting the engagement thing. Okay. So, uh, uh, if you know that there are more than 1.5 billion students who are going to K-12 schools every day, and more than 50% of the students, you know, that's like 0.75 billion students who are disengaged. Mm -hmm. And educationists, they believe that engagement has a direct impact on learnability. Mm -hmm. So we've created these... And intrinsic motivation basically yes, is the same thing. Yes. Yeah. So when they find their uh, learning material boring, they're not able to learn mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. So with them, we are targeting at engaging them with the learning content. We've designed these games which capture their, uh, you know, attention. Uh, attention and it makes learning faster for them and it makes learning basically engaging for them. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Final question for you. How would you describe Orbit Ed in three words? So it's fun learning. Well, thank you so much for, for all your insights today. It was, uh, it was fantastic. Um, do you have any last thoughts, comments um, or advices for, for the audience today? Yeah, I believe that as human beings in future, in the coming few years, creativity and problem solving are going to be two of the main skills mm -hmm. that we need as humans. Mm -hmm. And I guess in our individual capacity, we should all be working towards sharpening these skills yeah. and specifically in children, preserving the curiosity, the creativity that they're born with. I, I totally agree with that. Thank you so much. That was most thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, hi, Navir. Thank you so much for, for having us here uh, in Islamabad at your offices. Uh, for the audience, could you please briefly introduce yourself? Well, thank you so much for coming by, and I hope you enjoy the weather that we are yes. having today. Yes, of course. <laughs> uh, my name is Navira. I am the co-founder and CEO at Orbit Ed. Fantastic. So how would you describe uh, Orbit Ed in just a few words? What's the mission and purpose uh, behind the company? Uh, Orbited in, in a few words, it's a platform where you learn, mm -hmm. where actually the learning happens. Yeah. Uh, it's an interactive and measurable trainings, both for schools or actually children going to schools and for enterprises. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And our mission is to spark creativity mm -hmm. in children and in adults, everyone, mm -hmm. and to, you know, get that uh, problem-solving mindset going. Absolutely, I, I agree with that. Which, which is not going to be replaceable by technology, at least. 
Mm -hmm. So that's that's the mission that we're working on. So that that perfectly leads us to our our next question. Um, that you you partially answered that one, but according to you, what are the most important skills and mindsets that uh, young people should focus on developing uh, nowadays? So it's definitely creativity and problem solving. Yes. And the reason why I say that, and we're dedicating our lives to resolve that problem, is because there is going to be a lot of challenges when it comes to finding jobs mm -hmm. in the future. Mm -hmm. A lot of the jobs are going to be replaced by robots, by AI. Uh, for example, uh, I just came across this amazing tool which rewrites the content. So the copywriting job is going to get obsolete as we move forward. So all you can do is... Don't tell me that. I love to write. <laughs> Don't tell me that. <laughs> Allow really me sorry. to dream, please. <laughs> I'm really sorry about that. It's fine. But it's you fine. really have to be on top of your game because <laughs> if you're me on mediocre level, you are going to lose your job. Yeah. And if you're very creative and problem solver, then you, you'll be able to sustain mm -hmm. you know, in that challenging environment. Yeah. So that, that's why this is very important to have that mindset. Now, what about the corporate environment? So, um, according to you, what are the most important skills that company and the most demanded skills that company are looking for uh, when they actually hire people and they train their employees? So, apart from the technical knowledge and skills that each employee needs to have to do their particular job, uh, the biggest gap is when it comes to soft skills training. Mm when companies have to maintain certain culture, yeah. Yeah. when they have to train their employees on being you know, positive about things, killing that unconscious biasness that we all have on some level, with which we have brought up, uh, you know, having empathy for everyone in the workforce. So these things are very important when you're building a culture, when you're building a company. Mm -hmm. Because this is the basis, apart from all the technical things yeah. that, that you're doing. Okay. And this is where uh, they're suffering the most. And this is where we're trying to help them. Now, if we go back to the education space, according to you, how well do current education models uh, prepare students for the real life? And again, what are, what are some gaps that you've been uh, able to identify, not only in Pakistan, but also abroad? Picasso once said that every child is a born artist. Mm. And the problem is to remain an artist as we grow up. Uh, I've been following Sir Ken Robinson. He died last year, I guess. Uh, but there's a story that he tells, and I'm very fond of that story. Uh, so there was this teacher teaching arts to a couple of, like, to this, these bunch of students, aged between like five or six, uh -huh. right? And there was this little girl, and she was uh, drawing God. Right? And the teacher went up to her and she was like, what are you drawing? She's like, I'm drawing God. I'm making God. <laughs> uh, and uh, the teacher was like, but nobody has seen one. I'm like, yeah, but in a minute everybody will. So, so, that, <laughs> so that's, that's, that's the crazy. power of the human brain. That's how we think, right? But with our current education methods and technologies that we have, we suppress it. Mm -hmm. And that's very sad. You know, we suppress the human brain power mm -hmm. and it's too formatted according to you yeah. yes yeah I, uh, that makes sense we we have the ability to think outside the box but then our education system train us to think inside the box and then we get in our jobs we are again required to think outside the box mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and this is the dilemma that a lot of us go through and mm -hmm. some of us just lose track that you know where we're supposed to go yeah and schools are not addressing this they don't have the right tools or methodologies to to fill this problem or to even understand that this is the problem mm -hmm. and again this is how uh, with orbit we are creating the these interactive games where like the uh, you know it's limitless possibilities for example you want to Learn Newton, Newton's laws, right? You have a game, and you'll be playing a game, and you'll be learning the concepts because you'll be applying Newton's mm -hmm. laws there to win the game. You make it practical so people yes. can retain the knowledge because they're taking part in it. Exactly, exactly, and that's that's basically about it. Navira, thank you so much for all your insights today. It was uh, it was fantastic. Last question for you: um, Can you please describe Orbit Ed in three words? Uh, 
engaging, yes. fun, and measurable. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do you have any last thoughts, uh, comments, advices for, for the audience today? I think if you have a dream, just keep pursuing it. Keep going. Even if you, you know, hit obstacles on the road, that's okay. That, that's, they're supposed to be there. Absolutely. And uh, once you cross them, you'll be a better person professionally and personally both. So just keep going. Don't quit. I agree with that. I agree with that. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you.